Network News tonight, President Tinubu receives a new envoys, reaffirms diplomatic ties. Positive economic outlook for African countries as IMF projects growth. To sustain the focus on reducing inflation wherever inflation remains well above target. Housing deficit, federal government reiterates commitments to affordable homes for civil servants. Good evening and welcome to the Network News on NCA. I am Lami Ali, reading with me tonight from Lagos is Adeola Komiakiri. And for the details from the ongoing spring meeting, Benny has that and more on the business news segments. Remember, you can follow us live on nca.ng slash live. Now, President Bola Tinubu says Nigeria's investments climate has been bolstered by critical new reforms with an array of opportunities across sectors for investors. The president said this when he received a letter of credence from the new ambassador of the Republic of Korea to Nigeria, Kim Pan Kyu, at the State House this Friday. The president says Nigeria is a huge market for Korean products particularly for Korean goods manufactured and produced in Nigeria, and emphasize that Nigerian goods will be of great benefit to the Korean market as well. Highlighting the favorable economic outlook of the country, President Chinubu invites more South Korean companies to leverage these opportunities by establishing production base in Nigeria. He points out that Nigeria has investment opportunities in the solid mineral fat sector, in other areas and cooperation in these areas will strengthen bilateral relations between these two countries. Ambassador Akim underscores President Sunubu's pivotal role as the chairman of ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government and leader of Africa's largest economy, population and democracy. President Sunubu also received letters of credence from Ambassador Antis Mosen of Tunisia and High Commissioner Mohali Imbuwa of Zambia at separate events. The president emphasized the need to strengthen African unity and brotherhood that not only creates economic opportunities, but also works towards eliminating conflicts across the continent. Speaking with the High Commissioner of Zambia, the president says African unity and cooperation are important in the continent and the continent must overcome perennial conflict. In audience with the Tunisian ambassador, the president affirms Nigeria's willingness to deepen partnership with North African countries towards achieving continental prosperity for all African people. The Tunisian ambassador says his government welcomes the new vibrancy and determination the president has brought international leadership since his inauguration on May 29, 2023. Meanwhile, President Bonlatinubu has approved the appointments of new board of the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. They are Mr. Merika Aliu Katuka, Chairman, Mr. M. Motimi Agama, Director General, Fana Chukwogu, Executive Commissioner Legal and Enforcement, Mr. Bola Jomale, Executive Commissioner Operations, Mrs. Sami Hassan Usman, Executive Commissioner Corporate Services, Mr. Likon Bellu, non-executive commissioner, and Mr. Kasimu Gerba Kurufi, non-executive commissioner. The president anticipates that all members of the board of this critical commission will bring to bear their wealth of experience and competence in advancing the commission's core mandate of developing and regulating a capital, capital market that is dynamic, fair, transparent, and efficient to bolster investments confident, investors' confidence and contribute immeasurably to the nation's economic developments. Also, President Bola Tinubu has approved the appointments of the following qualified Nigerians as board members of the National Insurance Commission, NICOM. They are Ms. Halima Kari, Chairperson, Ms. Olushagun Ayo, Commissioner for Insurance, Mr. Olawi Gam Ikom, Deputy Commissioner of Technical Operations, Dr. Usman Ankara Jimada, Deputy Commissioner of Finance and Administration, Dr. Miriam Kene Kachiku, Member, 
Mr. Adeni Ulushegu Fabiku member and Mr. Umar Khalifa Mohammed member. The president expects the new board of the National Insurance Commission to exercise utmost probity as it leads the commission in ensuring a safe, sound and stable insurance sector while protecting policyholders, public interest and improving trust and confidence in the sector. Now, the federal government has inaugurated a 28-man inter-ministerial committee on activities to mark the celebration of the one year in office of President Bola Ahmed Tunubu. The committee is vested with the onus of planning and implementing activities to mark the first anniversary of the administration of President Bola Ahmed Tunubu. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Senator George Akume, said the essence of the celebration is premised on the need to render accountability to Nigerians on what the administration has done and to reassure the citizens of its commitment to deliver on the Renewed Hope agenda. The SGF, represented by the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, restated commitments of the administration to unleash the country's full potential by focusing on job creation, access to capital for small and large businesses, financial inclusiveness, the rule of law, and the fight against hunger, poverty, and corruption. The committee is chaired by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. We move to the National Assembly, where the House of Representatives says it will continue to interface with key players in the power sector towards achieving an electricity tariff acceptable to investors and consumers. Speaking after a meeting with distribution companies and other electricity stakeholders, Chairman House Committee on Power, Victor Nwokulu, says without a change in electricity tariff, the power sector lacks the capital to upgrade its capacity. The of band A, band B, band C is not to discriminate against anybody. But what they are saying that what they have, the existing infrastructure, what service can it deliver? What can it guarantee? What, that's what is making the difference. And one, that's why I would say that if it is sustained, will you be able to improve the service? What are we talking about? How long will it take you? Let me ask them. How long will it take you to improve? to install a better capacity that will ensure that people get light for 20, even if they get, if Nigerians get light for 12 hours now, I think we are better off than no light for three weeks. We had a member say that for one month. The committee promises further consultations with the Transmission Company of Nigeria, generating companies and other electricity stakeholders to find a middle ground on recent increase in electricity tariff. Now, the journey of a thousand miles, they say, begins with a step. It is this bold step the federal government, through the Ministry of Communications, Innovation and Digital Economy, is taking to achieve the renewed hope eight-point agenda, leveraging artificial intelligence. The minister, Boston Tijani, asked the closing ceremony dinner of the National Artificial Intelligence Strategy Workshop says the federal government is set to leverage the 60% youth population for the transformation. ICT correspondents on Lajidi Bello reports. What started in this hall with 120 leading Nigerian artificial intelligence researchers and practitioners, National Information Technology Development Agency and technology companies to co-create a comprehensive national artificial intelligence strategy is coming in handy. One of such is building national computing capacity for critical AI projects of national interest. Another is the AI tool, the first of its kind in the world, deployed to participate at the start of the conference as a repertoire with cutting-edge technology built in a week by young intellectual Nigerians. This is why we've put this together. So when people say we do not have the resources for compute, we've not done enough research, we tell them that Nigeria is a country, 230 million people, 60% under the age of 25. Strategic partnerships between National Information Technology Development Agency, Galaxy Backbone, and global partners to promote digital economy also manifested. We have the first Xeno kidney transplantation in the world where pig kidney was picked 
and AI technology was used to edit the gen. The Ministry of Communications, Innovation and Digital Academy is saying it won't rest on its oars until Nigeria is placed among the Committee of Nations fully driven by cutting-edge technology. On large day, Bello, NTA News. Nigeria now has the technology to prevent unwanted persons from gaining access into the country through the international airports. Minister of Interior Ulubumi Tunjojo, while test running e gates installed at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, says the facility is 99% completed and will be deployed for operations from next week. Victor Azu reports. The last time the Minister of Interior, Olubumi Tunjojo, was here, work was below 50% completion. Now the e-gates at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, are ready to be deployed for operations. The Minister is optimistic that the technology will eliminate unnecessary human interface, reduce bureaucracy, and make movements in and out of the country seamless. As far as Abuja is concerned, we are on 99.9 percent, .9%, you know, and uh, I think by Wednesday, I'm that will be 100 percent good. Uh, from what I've been told, Monday, Tuesday, work will start in Lagos. It's impossible for you to use another person's passport or an expired passport to enter into Nigeria with this solution. At the command and control center, domiciled at the Nigeria Immigration Service, work is also near completion. A situation that inspires the Controller General's confidence about interagency collaboration and its potency for national development. It helps us monitor the border better. It gives us that upper edge in terms of knowing what is happening on you know, real time. So that alone has put us way on top of what we're doing. The e-gates, also enabled to foil identity theft, will be replicated in other international airports across the country. In Abuja, Victor. Now, a federal high court sitting in Abuja has discharged and acquitted the former Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Mohamed Adoki, S.A.N., of the money laundering counts brought against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The presiding judge, Justice Inyang Eko, while delivering a ruling on a no-case submission filed by Adoki, held that the EFCC failed establish sufficient evidence against him. The court also ruled that Aliwa Abubakar, the second defendant, has to open his defense because he has a case to answer. In the 14 counts charge filed by EFCC against them, Adoke was accused of receiving the dollar equivalent of 300 million naira from Aliwa Abubakar. In High Court, uh, Federal High Court 5, so we thank God. The judge has adjourned until April 22nd for Abubakar to open his defense. Meanwhile, a dispute over who is the authentic national president of Association of Local Governments of Nigeria, Algon, has been settled by the Federal High Court Abuja as the court declined jurisdiction to entertain the matter. This was in a suit filed by one Abdullahi Abubakar, a factional president of Algon, and one Shuaib Onihoyi Shaban against another factional president of the association, David Kolade, uh, Kolade Alabi. The court in its judgment affirmed Alabi as the Algon's duly recognized president, jettisoning claims that he heads a local council development area in Lagos, but LCDAs are not recognized by the 1999 constitution. Court also held that the plaintiffs failed to obtain leave of Algon trustees before commencing the suit as required by law. The federal government says the proposed review in the justice sector will take cognizance of the act that criminalized the commission of suicide in Nigeria. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Agbemi S.E. and stated this in Abuja, while receiving a group of advocates of decriminalization of attempted suicide, Dele Atumbi reports. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Agbim SAN, explained that right to life as a blue right is sacrosanct and takes the center stage in the administration of President Bola Tinubu. 
The Chief Law Officer of the Nation promised that in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Health, the act criminalizing attempted suicide due to mental issues will be looked into. The issue of health occupies a key position in the minds of this um, administration. And uh, for you to have singled out two means a lot to us. We want to partner with those who have things to offer. The criminalization of um, suicide. You First I want to say that even apart from um, attempted suicide, it is an ameliorating factor mm -hmm. to say that a man who was alleged to have committed an offence was not in a good state of health. Seeking the intervention of your good office to weigh in you know, for this advocacy that we have brought today. Over the world, the evidence, medical evidence shows now that 80 to 90 percent of those who will attempt suicide, there is background mental illness, especially depression. It is the belief of the advocates that the implementation of Mental Health Act 2021 will go a long way in stemming the tide of mental health issues in Nigeria. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, and TA News. We pause now for some messages. Business news when we return. Do stay. Good to know you're here and now a talking business. We start by telling you that the Federation Account Allocation Committee at its April 2024 meeting shared a total sum of 1.123 trillion naira to the three tiers of government as a Federation allocation for the month of March 2024. From a gross total of 1.867 trillion naira from the stated amount, the federal government received 345.890 billion naira. The state received 398.689 billion. The local government councils got 288.688 billion naira, and the oil producing states received 90.124 billion naira as derivation. The communique issued by FARC at the end of the meeting indicated that the gross revenue from value-added tax for March 2024 was $549.698 which was an increase from the previous month and was distributed among the three tiers of government. It added that the gross statutory revenue of 1.017 trillion naira received in the month was lower than the previous month and the remaining balance was also distributed amongst the three tiers of government. The balance in the excess crude account as of April 2024 stands at 473 $754.57. Now, stakeholders on the platform of the All Progressives Congress, APC, have described Tinubu's presidency as a game changer in the continued race to fix Nigeria and reclaim its position as the largest economy on the African continent. The stakeholders under the edges of Federation of APC support groups say the dollar crash was a strong indicator of a guaranteed future for all. Political correspondent Abu Bakara Kwanga has the details. It has been less than a year into a four-year mandate granted to the Tenable's presidency and the Confederation of APC support groups is already tracking the gains of the administration with NERA appreciation as one of the major performance indicators of the nation's economy. One of such of its initiatives has manifested in the reversal of the crash of the Nigerian NERA against the US dollar. The group lost the commitment of NNPC Limited under the stewardship of Mele Kari and appealed for the prosecution of former governors standing trials of corruption and money laundry as APC thrives on the rule of law and democratic principles. They should allow Mr. President Amalan Kari to concentrate on performing their constitutional roles for the betterment of our dear country. The Confederation of APC support groups passed a vote of confidence on the APC national chairman, Dr. Abdullah Umar Ganduji and warned alleged impostors to respect the decision of a federal high court sitting in Abuja, which directed that status quo should be maintained. In Abuja, Abubakar Akwanga, NT News. 
Now, after four challenging years and multiple shocks, Africa's economy is expected to rise to 3.8% in 2024 from 3.4% last year. For Nigeria, they are to achieve its own share of economic growth for the year. The International Monetary Fund recommends that the country needs to increase tax to GDP by widening the tax base and minimize tax exemptions in order to increase revenue mobilization. Public finances with an emphasis on domestic revenue mobilization. This will help meet the region's vast development spending needs in the context of scarce concessional financing and high borrowing costs. Second, to sustain the focus on reducing inflation wherever inflation remains well above target. The IMF is impressed that public debt in Africa is stabilizing at around 60% of GDP as a few countries have been able to return to international markets, but advises policymakers to trade cautiously. It needs to diversify its economy. Second, this also applies to uh, the resources that the government relies on, which is, you know, uh, too much excessively on oil and not enough on non-oil revenue. For a country like Nigeria, Africa's most populous country, with all of those uh, development spending needs, we think it's problematic that tax revenue to GDP is only 8-9%. And for the institution, necessary reforms are needed for macroeconomic conditions to continue to improve in order to ensure that Nigeria can build its resilience to shocks, generate jobs, diversify the economy, and improve living standards. And still on conversations at Washington, D.C., the astronomical rise in price of drugs in Nigeria is likely to come down soon with expected open doors for investors and increased funding in the health sector in Nigeria. This is as the World Bank announced plans to support countries in delivering quality, affordable health services to 1.5 billion people by 2030. Moplang Dakok reports. The World Bank is putting health issues on the front burner in a high-level meeting when the world is faced with several problems like inflation, climate change and conflict. Nigeria's Minister of Health Ali Pate says with increasing domestic financing for health in sight, improving efficiency, enhancing transparency and accountability are top on Nigeria's agenda. What we're trying to do in Nigeria is articulate a vision, a direction, defragmented the landscape with the subnational levels also aligned with us and having our supportive global partners come to back us up with financing with technical support but following leadership of government and using national systems that are more sustainable and let's hold each other accountable there is really strong momentum and leadership so how are we going to position ourselves to support this change to support this dynamic and invest in such a way that allows governments to have ownership. Strong partnerships were advocated as catalysts to achieve results in health. And the minister says Nigeria will open the door for more private sector investments, especially in local production of medication. From Washington, D.C., Muplan Dakok, NTA News. We now move to Washington, D.C., where Muplang is standing by live to give us details on some of these conversations. Muplang Dakok, how is Washington today? Washington is cold as usual, but we're good. Great. It's been five days of conversations around energy for Africa, ongoing reforms around the monetary policy, basic health care delivery, and call for more cooperation amongst the G24 countries, which Nigeria is central. Can you give us much more details on some of these conversations and what it means for Nigeria at this time? Yes, we are expecting to see more investments into the country because um, the Minister of Finance met with uh, the G24 uh, members and he's conversing more financing and many of them have also gone into private meetings for discussions, further discussions, and we're expecting to see some signings of MOUs and some other uh, bilateral uh, agreements coming up tomorrow, which is the last day of uh, the meeting. So that will come um, subsequently. We're going to be giving you details of that. So what we expect is 
just as the uh, minister says and the governor of the central bank of nigeria they are expecting to see um, more investments into the country and the good thing is that uh, the imf also projects that uh, the country's economy is going to grow by 3.34 um, percent from the initial 2.8 percent that was projected for last year and even africa's economy is also as a whole is expected to grow so we expect that uh, at the end of these meetings before the next meeting we are going to see growth for the country Okay, great. Of particular interest at this time is the fact that without health, there is no wealth. And we had the Minister of Health uh, talking about Mohamed Ali Party advocating funding for about 100 million Nigerians to access basic health care. Just as the President of the African Development Bank, talking about Dr. Akiumi, calling on the World Bank to upscale financing for energy, for possible industrialization. After these conversations tomorrow, what should we expect? from all of this uh, engagement? Yes, what we expect to see concerning healthcare is um, the price, prices of uh, drugs in particular. The Minister of Health was concerned about the prices of goods. So he's hope, hoping, like all of us are, that the prices of drugs or medications in the country will drop. That's part of what we are expecting. Then we also, uh, they also talked about energizing Africa, where... Um, stakeholders from different parts of the world met just yesterday to talk, especially there were um, investors that were expecting into the power sector so that there will be improvements because without improvements in um, power, without electricity, of course, there will be no growth. So we are expecting to see those changes in the next couple of months, at least before the end of the year. Okay, thank you, Moplang Dakot, and please uh, keep warm. Thank you, Benny. Great. And now back to Nigeria, taking a look at the markets. At the close of last week, day of trading on the Nigerian exchange, investors lost 173.15 billion naira as the old share index declined by 0.31%. A total of 257.8 million shares in 7,168 deals, corresponding to a market value of 5.398 billion naira were traded. Today's data shows 10% decline in volume, 3% decline in turnover, but 7% decline in deals. The coin market's capitalization is 56.3 trillion naira. And at the close of trading, the market recorded 14 gainers, 20 losers, and 89 equities remained unchanged. Well, that is business news. The news continues with Lamy. Lamy, you can take it from here. Thanks, Benny. That's business news with Benny. Now, away from the world of business, ECOWAS will spend about $25 million this year on humanitarian activities in the sub-region. Out of this amount, $9 million has already been released to address issues of internally displaced persons, refugees and asylum seekers in member states. ECOWAS Commissioner for Human Development and Social Affairs, Professor Fatou Sosa, at a press briefing in Abuja said, ECOWAS is also planning a regional youth forum this year to enhance the capacity of youths in the region, Kelvin Ewunwai reports. Nigeria, Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger account for much of the IDPs and refugees in the region with their economic consequences in the affected areas, flood and other forms of disaster have compounded the issue, leading to huge humanitarian crises. In response to this crisis, ECOWAS will spend $25 million in the sector this year, but also prioritizing prevention through a disaster reduction strategy and tools to monitor displaced populations to anticipate problems and better manage crisis situations. Nine million is for internally displaced persons, refugees, and um, asylum seekers and the host communities. So you see that most people in that group are young people and women. As I had said, it is to enable uh, the resolution of this problem within our uh, region. On youth development, a major component of human capital development, ECOWAS is planning a youth conference to discuss issues of education, ICT, 
capacity building for youths and evaluate the various scholarship schemes for them in the region. In Abuja, Kelvin Ewonwaye, NTA News. More stories on network news with Adiola in our Lagos Network Center. It's over to you, Adiola. Thank you, Lamy. The 2024 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination UTME conducted by the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Examination Board JAM has uh, been adjudged to be peaceful on day one of the exercise which began nationwide. Polagia came who visited some centers in Lagos reports that the exams will run through to the 29th of April. Entrance into a higher institution of learning requires students to undergo entrance examinations. The prospective candidates for this year's jam were seen at various centers visited in early hours of Friday. The normal routine were adhered to where students were searched by security officers and their biometrics captured before being allowed into the examination hall. At Yaba College of Technology Center, while a batch was writing the exam, NTA camera lens captured another set of students waiting in a room made available by the center instead of hanging around. I give them kudos. They tried because in terms of their uh, environment, it's perfect, perfectly okay. In terms of the system, they have good system. They have good waiting room where the students are waiting for the other people to finish and come and write their own before they will be ushered into the exam. To some of the students, Writing 2024 JAM is a worthwhile experience, which they expect a good result. The examination is so good that the system is working very nice. It's okay. The network is not bad and everything is going well. It was very shocking. Like, I was scared in it, but God helped me out. I tried my best in the exam. NT News also observed that the order to parents not to move closer to examination center was strictly obeyed as parents were seen far away from the centers visited. In Lagos, Bolaji Akin, NCA News. Now, worried by the trend in which officers are maimed or killed during anti-smuggling operations, the Federal Operations Unit on A of the Nigeria Customs Service has trained 67 personnel on armed training and drills. The agency said the goal is to fulfill obligatory role of reducing smuggling to the barest minimum without casualty. Michael Olaleye completes the report. Between 2021 till date, there have been cases of customs officers killed in the process of safeguarding the economy of the nation from smugglers, with few escaping deaths by a whisker. <coughs> this trend is about to change with the training of 67 officers in arms handling. For four weeks, Customs personnel selected from various units and formations under the Federal Operations Unit Zone A were drilled on escort and orderly duties, rules of engagement, shoulder weapons, maneuver tactics, tactical reloading of magazine, shooting range, checkpoint, and feed exercise. These personnel are first to, to be trained on MP29 Naringo pistol. I am optimistic that the knowledge gained so far will go a long way in shaping these officers for higher responsibilities, meeting global standards and competitiveness. It is all-encompassing, not only how they comport themselves in the field amongst themselves, but how they deal with members of the public, but also in, in, in offensive situations, how they protect themselves and protect members of the public. For the outgun controller of the Federal Operations yes, Unit Zone A, this we initiative will assist the customs in fulfilling its fundamental role of checking on wholesome importation. The expectation is for them to go out there to practicalize what they have learned. The essence is to reduce casualty during operations. Trained officers I expected to transfer the knowledge gained to personnel at their various divisions. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. And those are the stories from Lagos. The network news will continue in a bit. Please stay with us. 
Thank you for saying. The federal government has reiterated its commitments to provide affordable homes for civil servants. This will be done through the Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation under the Federal Integrated Staff Housing FISH program in line with Pillar 6 of the Federal Civil Service Strategy and Implementation Plan 2021-2025. The head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Falasha de Yemirson, disclosed this during a site inspection of the ongoing construction of 116 housing units of two-bedroom semi-detached bungalows at Guagualada to be allocated to core civil servants upon completion. Haman Jabani has the details. The estate, which is fully funded by the Federal Government Staff Housing Loans Board, is being constructed in partnership with some real estate developers, is projected to be commissioned in June as part of activities to mark the 2024 Civil Service Week. Head of the Civil Service of the Federation for Lashadi Yemiesa called on all contractors involved in making the estate habitable to expedite action on the provision of electricity, water, and internal road network in the housing estate. The Executive Secretary, Federal Government Staff Housing Loans Board Brahim Meriga disclosed that two developers have already completed and handed over their buildings to the board. The commissioning of the estate will be a testament of the present administration pledge towards improving the welfare and well being of civil servants. The Fish Estate comprises of 116 housing units of two bedroom semi detached bungalows. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. Two books, Boko Haram and Security Challenges in Nigeria, as well as The Future of Democracy in Nigeria, have been unveiled to the public by Professor Abdullahi Shehu to add knowledge to the numerous books centered on the growth and developments of the country. Deborah Bala has the story. Both books of 669 as well as 399 pages are centered on current challenges facing Nigeria, issues and options for policy and reflections on the 2023 general elections. Lessons learned are critical points the book reviewers say will contribute significantly to understanding issues around terrorism, insurgency, non-military conflicts, and management of power. What to do? Once you are committed to do something, you will get it over. The books he has written may not be the last, and we hope it is, they are not the last. And this is one of the key points highlighted in the book. The lessons learned with regard to the management of the power rotation policy between the North and the South, though not a constitutional arrangement, will remain indelible for the sustainers of democracy in Nigeria. His Excellency, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has made security a top priority, and so the empirical research provided by scholars like Professor Shehu is essential. He has demonstrated exceptional academic and professional uh, skills and erudition and produced two important uh, books you know, on critical subjects that affect the peace, stability, and development of Nigeria. I believe that the recommendations in that book, even if two recommendations are, are implemented very well, I believe it will go a long way in addressing this thorny issue of Boko Haram. The author added that the books were written out of patriotism and empathy in aligning with the plight of the victims of insurgency in Abuja, Deborah Balagubo. And the co-marshal, Federal Road Safety Corps, Dauda Alibio, has decried excessive speeding and the use of substandard tires by motorists. This is in reaction to the unfortunate crashes that claimed the lives of 18 people in two different locations of Gaya Junction in Kano State and Tesheriari, Kaduna State. The investigative report submitted to the co-marshal reveals that the Gaia crash, which was occasioned by speed limit violation and tire bus, left 28 people injured, while 12 persons, including the driver, all male adults, were killed. 
On the other hand, the Teshenyari crash involved a total of 57 people comprising 30 male adults, 22 female adults and 5 female children from the number 30 were injured while 6 of the victims, all male adults, were reported killed. The co-marshal warned motorists to shun negligence and comply with maximum safety requirements. You're watching the next week news. More messages now. We will be right back. Do stay with the NTA. You're yeah, welcome back. Ulumide will bring us sports updates. The Federation Cup, which brings registered clubs at all tiers together in Nigeria, now has a new name. It is rebranded President Federation Cup. Following a deal signed by the Minister of Sports Development, John Eno, and partners of the Nigerian Premier Football League. It's going to get this cup to global, you know, to you know, global heights, you know, global attention. We are looking forward to see that at least, even if it's going to be from the quarterfinals, the Nigerians will see what is going on in the Federation Cup for this year. Similarly, the minister also unveiled the partnership deal between the Ministry of Sports Development and Yanga Games, meant to provide financial support for the country's national teams and athletes ahead of national and international assignments. Every support you give to it, you are giving it to that Nigerian child who has no future, who has no parents that can sponsor him or her, but who has a talent. To help the challenges they have with the lack of funds, for athletes that are traveling for events. In another news, as the inaugural Premium International Half Marathon gathers momentum, the organizer of the event, Bukola Olokbade, says adequate and thorough planning have been put in place to ensure a successful outcome. The Half Marathon is a 21 kilometers race that will begin from the city gate and terminate at the Old Parade Grand, Abuja. And I'm happy the president has been talking to us about energizing the narrative of our country. And it starts from here. In another development, all is now set for the maiden edition of the Association of Nigeria Women in Sports Games to kick off Friday in Lagos. The four-day sports competition is featuring six states in seven sporting events. Apart from the seven sports we are having now, our intention is to continue to expand. Elsewhere in Benin City, friends, Colleagues and associates gathered at the Samuel Ugbemudia Stadium to honor late Nigerian football icon, Coach Godwin Izilian, with a ceremonial match. Accommodation service was also held in his honor at the Holy Spirit Catholic Church, Ephraim Street. His remains were later interred at his residence. With sports update, Olumde Eguntola, NT News. Saturday's weather forecast is next. Welcome to Saturday's weather forecast. Mostly cloudy conditions with sunny spells is expected across the country during the morning hours. But as the day progresses, we have prospects for some rainfall activities, especially towards the southern region, to affect the stretch of the coast, the inland cities of the southwest and the southeastern region as well, extending to parts of Benue, Nesarawa, the Federal Capital Territory, Kwara, and Plateau State. Up north should be mostly sunny with few clouds here and there, although we have some prospects of isolated thunderstorms over southern Kaduna, Adamawa, and the Mambila Plateau in Taraba State. Please stay tuned for more updates. I remain Joyce Ogunleye, and I will see you again. And that does it on Network News for today. We thank you for watching. I'm Lami Ali. Do have a good weekend.